G'day guys. Uh, today I'm here with Justin Marks. It's been a while since we've spoken, Justin. Yeah, it's been about, what, six or 12 months? I yeah. can't even remember when you were here last. And we talked about Intellitros and then Team Rooms and, gee, storyboarding, you've been around. But today we'll be talking about reporting, right? Yep, that's the new area that I've been working on for TFS for the dev... Um, 14 releases, we're calling it internally. Okay, well, I'm glad you're working on it because it hasn't got a lot of love reporting for a couple of releases. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so, what are you going to show us? Um, so, basically, in 2013, mm -hmm. um, we started to introduce some newer features around the reporting space, right. specifically the ability to take a query mm -hmm. and make a chart from it. Um, and a lot of the users, have, as they're seeing the RTM product, they're saying, hey, this is kind of cool. We really like what we're seeing, but mm -hmm. we want more. We hear you. We've, that was just the start. We're on a, a much longer journey, um, and we're really taking some of the feedback we've heard over time of reporting to heart, and we're going to bring back the power of ALM, being able to take all the information that we have in the ALM space that TFS mm -hmm. is in a great position to provide and really give a full end-to-end um, -end scenario to give users insight into that data. Right, but we can do that today with reporting services. Are you talking about adding charts into reporting services? So reporting services is one solution, um, but there's a much larger Microsoft BI stack that we want to be a player in, and we want to leverage some of the new modern techniques. So we have heard that there is stuff in the BI space that we want to mm -hmm. solve. But we also want to make it easier where every dev, every engineer using TFS on a day-to-day -day basis can just get visual information or, or see visual depictions of their data. Instead of the traditional data grids, mm -hmm. we want to make visuals. We want to make charts and graphs that light up the experience. So are you asking us as knowledge workers to use PowerView or PowerVivid? So those are great tools, and if you find value in using them, we want to be able to enable those, mm -hmm. but we want to even simplify it further than that. Right. We want to just say, hey, if you want to look at a query, you should be able to see that as a pie chart of who it's assigned to. If you want to look at um, a simple data set, as I'll show you here, you want to be able to quickly get a chart. You shouldn't have to go into other tools and learn how those tools work just to get a simple picture. And do it in the web? And absolutely do it in the web. Cool. All so, right. all right, let me show you what we got. Cool. So here's the updated homepage. And one of the things with the updated homepage you'll see is that we now have the ability to not only pin the tiles that we've had in the past, but also the ability to pin charts. So the first chart we've enabled here is the ability to take any arbitrary query mm -hmm. and pin that to your homepage as a visual. So if I click on that. Yeah, that's called a donut report. A donut, <laughs> exactly. Pie graph, donut, however you want to look at it. Well, um, I, li I like it's a tile. I'm not a fan of donut reports okay. personally. But, <laughs> well, it's just one but version. I can change it, can't I? Exactly. So let me show what you got. So I can click with this, and it'll bring me right to that'll bring me right into my query. So I can see what all the bugs were that were building up to that right. chart. Um, but we have this new charts tab, and this is one thing we released in the 2013 product. Um, and in the chart tab, you can see that for this individual query that I've got selected, I have a bunch of different charts. So we have the donut chart, we've got bars and, and, and column graphs. We even have pivot charts here. So it's pretty simple to create one. You just click new chart, and you can basically choose which one of the charts I want to create. In this case, pie is always the easy one to show. No, bar would be better. <laughs> oh, you want me to show a bar just for you, Adam? <laughs> So you go to group it's by. It's much easier to read the data when it's a bar chart. <laughs> well, it depends on the data source. It, okay. it really does depend. Um, and from there, I can basically start choosing. And I'll just use the down arrow to choose between them. You can start seeing the preview of as I choose the wow. group by, it'll show you an it instantly render a preview of what that graph would look like given the current data. And once I have the chart, maybe I want to call it my Adam graph. And you can use sorting, et cetera, and then click OK. And suddenly that chart is available to you um, in this page. And then if you want to pin that to your home page, because that's kind of a new thing you want to mm. see every day, you can just click pin to home page, and that'll suddenly appear on your home page. If we go back there, you'll see that appear at the bottom of the screen. Wow, that's uh, easy. Pretty simple, right? Yeah. But this is just the beginning. I mean, we've done a bunch of things since we um, launched. So pinning was a new feature mm. that we added a couple sprints ago um, on Visual Studio Online. Another feature that we added, um, we got some customer feedback saying, hey, we love all of the Visual Studio Online colors, but you know what? I want to have ownership. If these are my charts, I mm -hmm. want to be able to make uh, my own color decisions. Yeah, so I we've agree. added the ability to um, do your own co custom colors per chart. Uh, uh, how do you think people know how to do that? So <laughs> discoverability is, of course, an issue. Um, we've taken a page out of some of the stuff we've seen in Excel and some of the other tools. Some to do hidden that. right clicks so there. Some hidden clicks there. Only Correct. for smart people. Uh, well, you are smart. <laughs> and I'm assuming the people that we're talking to uh, here in the video are smart as well. But yes, there are some things we can do for discoverability. Right. There's no Maybe doubt. Maybe a little tooltip as we roll over. 
Actually, we do have the tooltip over as you roll over. Oh, it tells you. It tells you more data. It doesn't tell you. Doesn't you say right click color. and that's, you can change the that's color. That's fair. That's fair. There's always room for improvement, and that's one of the nice things about shipping on Visual Studio Online. Mm. We're shipping every three weeks. Yep. So what you've seen is we since RTM we've had four sprints. And in three of those four sprints, we've added completely new features, not just bug fixes, but new features into the charting space. And that's actually how we continue to work for the next rest right. of the relief. We're not holding off some of these charting features for Dev 14 and the next major release. Mm -hmm. We're going to be sprint after sprint delivering new value to our customers along this line. So. Right. So the people that have installed TFS 2013, mm -hmm. Will, will they have to wait for an update? So for our on-premise customers, mm -hmm. there'll be the quarterly updates that we've okay. committed to and we've uh, shown pretty well for um, the last release. Cool. Um, but for the Visual Studio Online, every third Monday, or Tuesday as the case may be, mm -hmm. <laughs> you get yourself some new features and our release notes do a pretty good job of depicting what, what's coming. All right. And the update of Visual Studio Online mm -hmm. has been awesome, hasn't it? Oh yeah, it's been really great. And the thing I like a lot about that, having the ability mm -hmm. to ship to Visual Studio Online is we get instant feedback from things like Twitter and some of mm -hmm. the social networks, but also from our telemetry. We've got full telemetry on the site, so I have great insights in how users are using our service and what's working and what's not working. So you say, hey, is the color something that mm -hmm. is actually discoverable? Well, I can point to the data showing you how many charts have actually used customizable colors. Really? And we know that that's a fairly large number. It's like, hey, maybe because it's so big, we don't need to prioritize the discoverability because right. more people are using it. Or we can yeah. say, hey, you know what? No one's using the pivot table. We want to actually do something there to make that better or put a new right. chart in there. So we can actually That's get awesome. that data in real time now, which is a really powerful thing as a product yeah. owner. So this is kind of what we have today. Um, we also are, as I say, we're giving more features on mm -hmm. there. Um, one of the things we've heard is that these are these snapshot charts, we say, the current view of our queries is great, mm -hmm. but wouldn't it be great to see trends? Wouldn't I like to see a query over time, my active bugs over the last 30 days? Oh, yeah. That's been one of the top things people have asked us for, mm -hmm. and that's something we're actually working on right now, and we should have in the service at the beginning of the year. Um, so that's the kind of feedback we're looking for, okay. and then another thing we're seeing is like, hey, these are great charts for our work item data. What about virtual version control? What about my Git pushes? What about my build? Can we get graphs and pictures about that information? And that's something we're actively investigating, and we definitely want to move into that space and have this be a very low-cost, low-friction way for customers to depict their data in the web. And so once I've got it in here, I'm quite happy, but I want to extend this a bit further. How do I get this to Excel, I guess? So today, um, or for the, Power View. Or Power View, um, or Power Pivot, or Power, mm -hmm. like, there's a ton of the Power Star group, as okay. I like to call it. Um, today, our we don't have a great solution in Visual okay. Studio Online, okay. unfortunately. Um, there's a new white paper that came out of the Rangers on how we can use Brian Keller's OData feed um, and right. Power Pivot to get some access to that data, which mm -hmm. is a great solution. Um, and on-prem, you have the existing OLAP cube and data warehouse scenarios. So you have access through those points. Um, but both of those solutions, um, while Brian's solution and, and using OData and the Ranger solution is going in the right direction, um, the OLAP cube is, let's, let's be honest here, pretty legacy. This is something in very, very old school. This was modern technology mm -hmm. yep. 10 years ago. Um, so we're so that's had a number of problems. People don't oh, want to... Yes. People, well, first of all, you're not adding everything into the exactly. cube. Exactly. You don't. You can't find someone to write MDX for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and nobody loves it. MDX. No. Yes. So we're actually in parallel to working on these charts. We're looking at ways that we can modernize the reporting stack. And one of our key initiatives in Dev 14 is rebuilding the, the stack from the ground up based on modern BI techniques. So we're looking at using OData as a first class citizen in the service, mm -hmm. not just a separate add-on thing. That's a good thing. idea. Yep. We're looking at using tabular cubes and tabular models as a way right. of, of modeling the data. We're looking at using Power Pivot and Power View as first class authoring experiences for your reports. And we're even looking at ways that we can bridge the web experience we're doing here for charts and move that directly into that modern BI stack. So you can export one of these charts you make, get it into Excel, it has a connection to mm -hmm. your cube, and be able to work and, and use that as kind of a jumping off point for doing further investigation and further report designing. So Justin, are you saying the, sol the grand solution that you're working on mm -hmm. I will not care about the cube and I won't care about the data warehouse. So none of the stuff we're doing today and mm -hmm. none of the stuff we mm -hmm. plan on doing in the web is going to be using the cube. Uh, that's our right. current plan. We might change that, yeah. of course. But right now we're doing all that directly off the operational store. So all of those charts are live. You resolve a bug, your charts change. So right. that's a, some real powerful stuff there. Of course, we're not going to let you build charts over 
thousands and thousands of data points because mm. it's just not going to scale well. Fast. Right, and I that's see. where the cube really comes into power, becomes right. more powerful because so that there helps will offload that. Still work. be a cube. So the plan is there still be a cube. We're still mm. early mm. in the phases mm. there, but our, our desire is mm. to be able to with Dev fourteen be able to have a complete Microsoft BI stack solution for both on premise and our cloud customers. Okay. So and it's early, but that's the, the, the kind of like as much as I can talk about now right. with it, because we're still working on it, but we love feedback. And, and for us, the key thing we need to know is what kind of things do people want to do with the data? What data do they want to have access to? What kinds of reports are people writing or being asked to write that they can't write today? Right. And that's the kind of stuff we, as a product owner, need to know so we can build the right solution for our customers. Okay, and how do, do you want tweets? How do we give you feedback? So we're uh, actively monitoring um, the Twitter with, uh, I think it's hashtag TF service. I'm sure there's a new VS online. Hashtag mm -hmm. after our release a couple weeks ago. But another great site is using User Voice. So, User Voice you can get to right off of, of the website, and User Voice is a great place to suggest your ideas and be able to provide feedback. And of course, you have my email address, jmarks at microsoft.com. People can email me their um, ideas and say, hey, here's a picture of a chart my manager has asked me to do or that I think is really valuable. Right. That's the kind of stuff. I, I'm not committing that we're going to do every chart, yes. but it helps influence our design and make sure we're thoughtful about what we need to bring into the cube and what we need to make into our OData uh, feeds. Right. Oh, right. that's exciting. Yeah. So we'll end up with quite a few out-of-the-box reports, mm -hmm. and we'll have a very easy in-browser way to build them. Yep. And then... Um, we'll take it even further. Absolutely. I mean, this is just the beginning. Reporting is right. long overdue for an overhaul yeah. and a refresh. So we're, we're actually putting money where our mouth is there. So. Okay. Well, with that, thank you very much, Justin. This is Adam Kogan signing off for SSW TV. Did you get all that? We'll take the SSW TV quiz and test your knowledge now.